come home till they leave, won't you come home? She moaned. Our story begins on Valentine's Day, February 14, 1900. On that day, a young civil engineer from the city of Oakland filed articles of incorporation for the Granite Rock Company. Along with a small group of investors, Arthur R. Wilson had purchased a little granite quarry on the banks of the Pajaro River outside of Watsonville. A.R. had experience in mining and construction, and his business was soon off and running. Granite Rock was building roads and buildings throughout Northern California, and granite from the quarry outside Aromas was being used to build new railroads throughout the region. Early on, the only way to mine the rock was with picks, shovels, and wheelbarrows. Breakfast was served in the cookhouse at 5 a.m., and men earned a day's wages of $1.75. They broke up the granite and loaded it onto horse-drawn wagons for transport to the railroad line. A steam-powered crusher was installed in 1903, and it boosted production from 12 tons per day to 20 tons per hour. But a disastrous earthquake struck in the early morning of April 18, 1906. The crushing plant was destroyed, train rails were twisted, and rail cars overturned, and all their contents were spilled out on the tracks. Granite Rock was temporarily out of business. A.R. Wilson bought up all the bread he could find in Watsonville, loaded it onto his wagon, and took it to San Francisco to help in the relief effort. The earthquake's destruction created a demand for new construction, and before long, automobiles were replacing the horse and buggy. Street paving became necessary, and Granite Rock was busy paving streets and highways, installing gutters, and supplying materials for all kinds of new construction projects. In 1915, San Franciscans celebrated the rebuilding of their city with a Grand World's Fair. Here, Granite Rock received the first of many awards for quality, the Panama Pacific Exposition's Gold Medal of Excellence for Crushed Rock. After World War I, Granite Rock built bunkers to supply local construction businesses along the railroad line from South San Francisco to San Luis Obispo. California was booming and the company grew with it. In 1918, Granite Rock built a highway known as the Cauliflower Boulevard to connect the towns of Casterville and Salinas. And on the crew was a summer laborer named John Steinbeck. In 1922, Wilson split his business into three separate companies. Granite Rock produced rock and sand products, Central Supply sold materials, and Granite Construction handled construction projects. In 1936, Wilson's widow sold Granite Construction to its managers, and ever since then, the two companies have been completely separate entities. In October 1929, while driving home from work at the quarry, A.R. Wilson suffered a massive heart attack. His young widow Anna took over as president and son Jeff Wilson became general manager. All this was just days before the 1929 stock market crash and the beginning of the Great Depression. The depression took a heavy toll on American business, but despite the setbacks, Granite Rock Company progressed. California's first asphaltic concrete plant was opened at Aromas, and the company began the state's first delivery of pre-mixed concrete. World War II brought a demand for construction projects to support the war effort, and in response, the company expanded and modernized the quarry at Aromas. In the early 1950s, A.R.'s daughter Betsy and her husband Bruce G. Wolpert took over management of the company. Together, they guided it through years of tremendous development in the Monterey and San Francisco Bay areas. Betsy was just unbelievably good about the women who worked at Granite Rock. They just bent over backwards to make things right. They did. Not just for me as a woman, but for all people. I've seen guys get all kinds of opportunities I know they would have never gotten anywhere else. New plants went in from San Francisco to Monterey, 
and Granite Rock supplied the materials required to build the homes, highways, and construction projects of our region. In 1986, Bruce and Betsy retired, and their son, Bruce W. Wolpert, brought fresh energy to Granite Rock. Bruce introduced a focus on the personal development and empowerment of Granite Rock people. He emphasized the importance of strengthening our local communities and making a commitment to community service. During the 1980s, the company undertook a major investment to completely modernize quarry operations. A giant mobile primary crusher, new wash plant, and secondary crushers and conveyors were installed, and an innovative computer-automated truck and rail car loading system was unveiled. The company acquired additional concrete, sand, and recycling operations, and a newly formed construction division quickly became one of California's top heavy engineering contractors. Granite Rock was recognized for its innovative methods of meeting customer needs with the highest quality products and precise, fast, and flexible service. In 1992, we were awarded our nation's highest honor for business excellence, the Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award. And in the small business category, Bruce Wolpert, co-president and CEO, Granite Rock Company, Watsonville, California and Granite Rock people traveled to Washington, D.C. to accept the award from President George H.W. Bush. Anything with motors fascinated me, so I was driving a big truck back and forth over Highway 17, hauling sand. And I, I looked at other avenues in this industry and always looked at Granite Rock as, as the place I would want to be. People ask me if I've got you know any thoughts or you know, regrets about Granite Rock, and I've always said that my only regret is I didn't get here sooner. On February 14, 2000, Granite Rock invited customers and friends to help celebrate our 100th anniversary. And in preparation for the new millennium, new corporate offices were opened in Watsonville. The information age and quality-focused research and development technology produced an array of groundbreaking systems to advance productivity and customer satisfaction. The first years of the new century brought tremendous challenges. In 2008, the construction industry was hit hard by the deepest and longest recession since the 1930s. And before it was over, on June 24, 2012, Granite Rock was also faced with the sudden death of its president and CEO. For the first time in its history, executive management came from outside the Wilson Wolpert family. Granite Rock people continue to find new opportunities in the face of challenges. Renewed emphasis on safety and extensive investment in technology, plants, and equipment have strengthened the company and its people. Structures, grinding, and cold-in-place recycled asphalt paving units have expanded construction capabilities. A new generation of Granite Rock leaders carry on the values of quality, innovation, and respect for people first established by our founder, A.R. Wilson. <laughs>